Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of Let's Move Austin. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, here with your host, as always, Teresa Bastian. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Well, let's talk about some uh, real estate stuff today, yeah? Yes. We're going to get into in. something kind of fun. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard of a contingent offer, Chris? Why, no. What is a contingent offer? <laughs> well, Teresa? technically... A contingency is something that must be removed in order to move forward with the contract. Mm. So you could have a contingency for financing, right? The yes. terms of the financing need to be met in order to complete the sale. Clear. Well, a lesser known contingency mm. is you may have to sell your house before you can buy your new house. Ah, uh, that and, is a contingency. Uh -huh. For a long time in Austin, like a long time, we have not seen many contingent offers because the market was so hot, you were just foolish. Nobody would accept a contingent offer. Right. Okay. Right. There, was, there were plenty of buyers who would. Yeah. Sellers didn't need to wait for right. you to sell your house in order to buy theirs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Things are stabilizing a little bit, mm -hmm. especially at certain price ranges. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing some contingent offers where the sale of another property must happen before the purchase of this property mm -hmm. and sellers are thinking, you know, maybe I'll give that a consideration. Hmm. How do we do that to protect yeah. both parties? Yeah. So, well, well, we have a promulgated form you have a that we form? use. Yeah. Would you call yeah. it a what form? Promulgated. It is a standard <laughs> that's a, form. That's a great word. Vocabulary for today. Got it. <laughs> So what I'm trying to get at here, it's not an email from one agent to an agent going, hey, my clients want to buy this listing, but they have to sell their house. Is that cool? Mm. No, no, no. We <laughs> put it in the contract. No, no. So yeah. it's legit. Mm -hmm. And this addendum needs to come over with the offer mm. so it can be vetted by the listing agent and explained to the sellers. And the key things that the form is going to have on it are the property address that is to be sold. Got it, yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so yep. why would I need that? I'm not selling that property. Why do I care what address it is? Yes, you go on. I'm asking you now. now oh. you <laughs> okay. I'm like, okay. I'm waiting for the answer. Like, what is it? <laughs> what is it? Oh my God, give hey, me some popcorn. Let's say you wanna buy a property in a really hot area of town but you're God. selling a property right. in a really right. slow, slow part moving there. part of town yes, mm -hmm. or another town or Detroit. Yeah. Or another state. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So first thing I want to do is know what is this house they need to sell? Right. If I have the address, I can do a bunch of research on it mm -hmm. or I can ask for more information on it. Right, no, I have to sell my meth house before I can uh, buy your yeah. suburban house. <laughs> hey, no, if you price it right. But that's the other thing, I'm gonna ask, mm -hmm. is this property already on the market? What mm -hmm. is it going to be priced at? What is the time frame for putting it on the market? I might even say, as the listing agent, right? Mm -hmm. I might even say, let me see a couple pictures of the interior. Mm -hmm. What are the finishes? Because I wanna make sure this property is gonna be priced well, and that it is marketable. Because the minute that the house goes under contract, it's technically off market. Like buyers don't come look at a house that's contingent, right? Like, right. I mean, that was my experience. Buyers don't come in and go, hey, let's look at this one. It's contingent. No, it's a, yeah. For all intents and purposes, your seller will not receive any more showings if yeah. they accept a contingent offer. Right, right. So we want to yeah. make sure this buyer's offer has a lot of meat to it exactly. and that the property they're selling, they yeah. understand, you know, we're not going to start pricing it over market and we have all the time in the world. Right. That's okay. Good. So the price, um, that has to be, or the, the home and the price are standard things to review. The other thing is this form has a clause saying the buyer could waive the contingency. Okay. If they notify the seller and deposit extra earnest money. And I have had this happen one time. The buyers wanted to sell their home first before they purchased the other. But when they didn't get an offer on their home right away, they decided to dig into their 401k, take some money out. So they didn't lose the home they wanted to purchase. Mm -hmm. And then when their home sold, they just put it back. 
So got it. Okay. There can be a method to possibly massage it if right. depending on the situation. But right. you want to have dates in all those blanks yeah. so that those scenarios are workable mm -hmm. and yep. all like kind of pre-negotiated. Yeah. Okay. I love it. So is it a one page form? How long is that form? That it's just a one form. page form. Yeah, it's a one page form. Mm -hmm. Got it. So Good. but sometimes I'll receive offers where this one page form is not filled out completely or not filled out properly. Mm. There's some education that I have to do to protect my sellers, mm. but it's also protecting the buyers. I mean, you don't right. want to have a Good. form with half the blanks missing. Right. So I would say, depending on your house in Austin, a contingent offer may well be worth looking at. The mm -hmm. place where I think it's the sweetest is if your house is say in the 500 range, and the house the buyer needs to sell is in the 300 range, mm -hmm. well, there's a huge market for entry-level homes, which in Austin is 300. Right. So yeah. the chance of that home selling pretty quick is good, mm. and then those people can move up and buy your house, where the market's a little, you know, it's harder to find a $500,000 buyer than a 300. Right, yeah, good point. So it's gotta make sense. Yeah, good point. Versus I would imagine like in a, if it was a downsizing scenario, like we have a $700,000 house and we're trying to move into some whatever. Again, some... it depends. But if that $700,000 house, if the buy, if the sellers of that house were willing to price it under market, then point, that yeah. might yeah, take my mind on that assessment. Yeah. So, point, you know, yeah. as with it, you got to consider it on a case by case basis. Yeah, I get that. But That's sometimes good. I hear people say, oh, we're not considering contingent offers. Mm. You want to go, well, you know, are you sure you don't want to consider it? Let's, mm. let's look at it first. <laughs> that would be my recommendation. Well, yeah, that's great. I love it. You're so, you're so tactful. So tactful. Well, I try. I try. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. It's good. Uh, good stuff. Well, don't anything be scared else? Of contingent offers, just be scared of, you know, random emails written about them. But if it's documented and on the proper forms, yeah. And the exact scenario has been vetted. It, it yeah. could be a very viable option. Yeah. And you, I think the, the ticket to the vetting piece is then you just want an agent who knows how to vet it. I mean, that's, I mean, right. It's you, pretty much I mean, what all these episodes say. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I love it. There's an ace up the sleeve. All right, good. Well, um, I love it. That's great. If you guys want to work with a very seasoned agent who knows how to uh, vet things as such then and use promulgated forms, <laughs> then you'll want to reach out to Teresa. Teresa, where can people reach you? You can call or text me 512-297-3442. I look nice. forward to working with you on your contingencies. Yes. Yay. All right. Good times. Until next time, Teresa. See ya. Okay. See ya, Bye, Chris. Bye, everybody.